Today, Steve Jobs wanted to share three stories from his life. Nothing too fancy, just three stories. The first one was about connecting the dots. Steve mentioned how he dropped out of Reed College after just six months. But instead of leaving completely, he stuck around as a drop-in for another 18 months before officially quitting. Now, why did he drop out in the first place? Well, it all started before he was even born. His biological mother was a young student without a husband, and she decided to give him up for adoption. She had a strong preference for him to be adopted by parents with college degrees. So it was all set for him to be adopted by a lawyer and his wife. However, when Steve was born, they suddenly changed their minds, wanting a girl instead. In the middle of the night, Steve's parents, who were on adoption waiting list to receive a call asking if they wanted an unexpected baby boy. Without hesitation, they said yes. But Steve's biological mother found out later that his adoptive mother hadn't graduated from college and his adopted father hadn't even finished high school. She refused to sign the final adoption papers. It took a few months, but eventually she agreed when Steve's adoptive parents promised that he would go to college. And that, Steve said, was just the beginning of his journey. 17 years later, Steve Jobs found himself in college, but it wasn't what he expected. The college he picked was almost as expensive as Stanford, and it was eating up all his parents' savings. He didn't know what he wanted to do with his life, and college didn't seem to be helping. So he made a bold choice. He dropped out and hoped for the best. It was scary at first, but looking back, it was the right move. Without the constraints of college, Jobs could explore what interested him. Sure, it wasn't glamorous, he didn't even have a dorm room. Instead, he crashed with friends and scraped by returning Coke bottles for food money. Every Sunday night, he'd trek seven miles for a decent meal at the Hare Krishna temple. Odd as it sounds, he loved it. And those moments of following his curiosity and gut feelings led him to valuable discoveries. At that time, Steve Jobs decided to attend Reed College, known for its excellent calligraphy classes. Despite not knowing the typical curriculum due to dropping out, he opted for a calligraphy course. In this class, he delved into the intricacies of serif and sans-serif typefaces, spacing between letters and the essence of great typography. Although seemingly unrelated to his future, this art form captivated him. Fast forward a decade when Jobs was developing the first Macintosh computer, his calligraphy knowledge resurfaced. The Mac became the pioneer in featuring beautiful typography thanks to Jobs' insights from that calligraphy class. Reflecting on this experience, Jobs realized that without that single course, the Mac might never have possessed such aesthetic fonts. His unconventional path, including dropping out and exploring calligraphy, ultimately influenced the design of personal computers. While he couldn't foresee the future during college, looking back, the significance of those choices became crystal clear. Ten years later, Steve Jobs reflects on his life journey. He shares a profound insight. You can't see how things will connect in the future, only in hindsight. He advises trusting in something, whether it's your instincts, fate, or life's twists and turns. Believing that things will come together eventually gives you the courage to follow your heart, even when it takes you off the beaten path. Steve the recounts the personal story of love and setback. He reminisces about founding Apple with his friend Woz in his parents' garage at just 20 years old. Through hard work, Apple grew into a multi-billion dollar company with thousands of employees. Yet at the pinnacle of success, Steve faced an unexpected turn of events. He was fired from the company he started. The reason? Differences in vision with a new hire. Despite initial success, their path diverged, leading to a falling out. The board of directors sided against Steve, leaving him ousted and feeling utterly lost. He describes the experience as devastating, feeling like he'd failed not just himself, but a legacy of entrepreneurs. In the midst of this turmoil, Steve grappled with uncertainty. He sought solace in meeting with mentors like David Packard and Bob Noyes, grappling with his sense of failure. Yet through the darkness, a realization emerged. He still loved what he did. Despite the setback, his passion for innovation burned bright. Despite being rejected by Apple, Steve Jobs remained steadfast in his love for the company. He saw his dismissal as an opportunity to start anew, 
Little did he know at the time, losing his job would turn out to be the best thing that ever happened to him. The weight of success was replaced by the freedom of being a beginner once again, allowing him to enter a period of great creativity. Over the following five years, Jobs founded two new companies, Next and Pixar. He also found love with an incredible woman who would later become his wife. Pixar went on to produce a groundbreaking movie, Toy Story, making it the most successful animation studio globally. In a surprising twist, Apple acquired Next, leading to Jobs' return to the company. The technology developed at Next became central to Apple's revival, while Jobs and his wife built a beautiful family together. Jobs reflected that none of these achievements would have been possible if he hadn't been let go from Apple. In Steve Jobs' speech, he talked about tough times and how they're like nasty medicine, but sometimes you need that. He said life can really well up you hard, like with a brick on your nugget. But he didn't lose hope. He believed his love for what he did kept him going. Steve thought it's super important to find what you really love, whether it's your job or your sweetheart. He said if you spend a lot of time working, you gotta make sure it's work you think is awesome. And the way you to do awesome work is to love what you do. If you haven't found that yet, he reckoned you should keep hunting and not just settle for whatever. When you find it, he said, it's like finding a super sweet romance, it just gets better and better. Then he talked about death. When he was 17, he read something that stuck with him. It said, live every day like it's your last day, and one day you'll be right. That got him thinking. If today was my last day, would I want to do what I'm about to do? If he said no too many times in a row, he knew he had to change something. Thinking about how life is short helped him make big decisions. He said when you know you're gonna die someday, all the stuff like what people think of you or being scared of failing doesn't matter as much. What's left is what's truly important. Remembering that we're all gonna die, he believed is the best way to not get stuck doing stuff you don't care about. He ended by saying nobody wants to die, even if they want to go to heaven. But death is something we all face. No one's got an out of it yet. Steve Jobs stood on the stage, his presence commanding attention. He spoke with a calm confidence, his words carrying weight as he addressed the audience. Death, he began, is perhaps life's greatest innovation. He explained how it serves as a catalyst for change, clearing the path for new beginnings. The new, he emphasized, is you. In his trademark style, Jobs continued acknowledging the inevitable passage of time. Someday, he cautioned, you will become the old cleared away, like yesterday's news. Despite the somber tone, he urged his listeners not to waste their limited time on Earth living someone else's life. Don't be trapped, he warned, by the thoughts of others. He encouraged them to listen to their inner voice, to follow their hearts and intuition. They already know, he assured, what you truly desire. For Jobs, everything else paled in comparison to this inner calling. As he concluded his speech, Jobs left his audience with a simple yet profound message. Stay hungry, stay foolish. It was a reminder to embrace curiosity and risk-taking, to never settle for mediocrity. And with that, Steve Jobs stepped off the stage, leaving behind a legacy of innovation and inspiration.